Welcome to Media Scavenger Hunt. It's your guy Walter, and tonight we're here to review a new NBC series titled Constantine. It's from the DC Comics, and a lot of things that have been happening in the world of Constantine. This is episode three, titled The Devil's Vinyl. But before we start into all of that, I'm going to give you a quick review on episodes one and two. But first, let me just give you the synopsis of episode three. John and Zev come face to face with a sinister force that is terrorizing a woman and her family. John must also deal with his own dark past as he takes on a powerful new adversary known as Papa Midnight. Dun, 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 dun. What you need to know about episode one and two is... We get introduced to John Constantine who checks himself into an asylum because one of his past sins, trying to do something righteous, he accidentally condemns a girl's soul to hell as well as his own. Now trying to balance the scales of his fate, he goes around helping people with their supernatural problems. He's an exodus, a demonologist, and a master of the dark arts. He says this funny line in episode one. He says, uh, I really should change that to Petty Dabbler because I don't like to put on airs. So this shows his, his comic side, his wit and everything. Because if anybody knows anything about John Constantine, one of his greatest powers is he's a trickster or, you know, he's very sarcastic. So he has the power of persuasion. While in there, he finds out that some big evil is starting trouble, and one of his oldest friend's daughter is in trouble, and she needs his help. She's gifted with the sight of seeing spirits as well as lost souls. Because of a pendant that he gives to Constantine to give to his daughter, she's able to spill her blood on a map and start marking places where bad things are happening. Now John uses this as like a mystic GPS. The girl isn't in, is even in the show anymore. So that's a good thing. But the two things she left, like I said, is the, the mystic map as well as her father gave John and Chaz. Ch Chaz is John's oldest friend who's also, we don't know if he's immortal or what, but he, we find out later we'll get his backstory but he left John and Chaz a cottage that is a magical place of holding for cursed objects and mystical items a spiritual safe house as Chaz tells Zed as he's walking her around the place they use this as their headquarters there's an angel named Manny that tells John he can get his soul back if he helps him, you know, solve the mystery of this big evil that has come upon, come upon the earth and help him stop this in this holy war, as well as get these mystic, uh, these cursed and charmed items back. So, you know, John wants to do that and get his soul, his soul back. In episode two, we're introduced to Zed. Who is another form? Who has another form of the third eyesight? Her psychic abilities enhances all five of her senses. She's been drawing John for months, and they link up in this coal mining town where John was trying to help these uh, people with these these uh, spirits that was in this coal this coal mine that were awakened. And John tells her if she helps him. He'll help her strengthen her talents. Episode 3, titled The Devil's Vinyl. It starts off with a lady in Chicago, Illinois. She breaks into an old abandoned studio. She finds an old, big, dusty Bible hidden in the wall. Inside of it is an old vinyl. She takes it to this, old, this older producer named Bernie to see if it's real. It is. It's cold to the touch, and it, it whispers to him to play it. He plays it, and he kills himself. In a panic, she takes it, she takes it home and hides it with, amongst all the old records. We find out that Bernie 
was another one of Constantine's old friends from back in the days when Constantine was in a punk rock band and he produced his one and only record. So he, he wants to solve this and see, he wants to solve this case is more personal than anything. John Constantine is a upstanding warlock that has a big leather bag full of tricks. He still had to, he still has to practice spells, but he has a few items inside this bag that helps him out. One is the nails from the coffin of St. Puda, patron of lost souls. The nails can be used as a tracking device because they follow each other. Two, the hand of glory. It's the cut, it's the cut off left hand of a man that was hung, pickled in ambiotic fluid for seven years with the right incarnation and the dead can rise as long as the candles are burning, which is the fingers. He uses this to wake up Bernie for a wake up Bernie for a little while and ask him what happened. Bernie whispers things to him and one of the things he whispers is Moonrise. Moonrise Records. He also has a charm playing card that takes on the appearance of whatever the holder requires it to be. A badge, a credit card, whatever. He says that it's a, a real dark backstory to this but he never he doesn't go into detail on it. Maybe later on we'll find out what the backstory is to this charm playing card. Zed reminds John that he told her that every spell has a price. What did he mean by it? He says, some days off my mortality. It's like a reverse mortgage. And he says he'll do anything or whatever it takes to help people as well as himself. She looks at him strange, like, wow, that's deep right there. Have you ever heard the urban legend of Willie Cole? This is a Memphis blues man that supposedly sold his soul to the devil. Well, the night that Willie was recording, the fallen one came to collect his soul. And you can hear whispers of his voice on it, on the vinyl. And this is what everybody's after right here. And so this is a very valuable and wicked item. The lady was supposed to give this to a soul broker and her contract or her debt would be paid who was working for Papa Midnight, a very powerful voodoo priest who John and him have history. Now, Papa Midnight is the gray area between black and white magic or good and evil. So he's kind of a neutral and he does things to his own accords, but he balances he's on a fine line that he could you know fall either way up a midnight sends his goons to get the vinyl and of course they're not supposed to touch it but one touches it and it touches the other one they get possessed and they start wreak, wreaking havoc what's the reason that papa midnight wants this valuable wicked item he says it's his get out of hell free card but we come to realize Later on, that Papa Midnight has a lot of mystic items at his disposal as well as John Constantine. So, Constantine can't let Papa Midnight have this. So, in a last minute effort, he sends it back to hell, sacrificing two of Papa Midnight's goons who was trapped inside the college radio station room. <sighs> this was a great episode. It gave us a little backstory on Constantine as well as introduce this new character Papa Midnight as well as you know what this show really reminds me of it reminds me of two shows actually a mashup as a matter of fact one is a back in the day series called Friday the 13th series I don't know if a lot of you all are familiar with it but it was three people and they ran like a pawn shop or antique uh, boutique where there was a lot of mystical and cursed items and they had to every week they had to retrieve these items back as well as help people and of course it reminds uh, reminds me of supernatural which is also a great show it's still on right now and everything and i do believe that supernatural the creators of supernatural probably were comic book fans and took a whole bunch of elements from constantine in the supernatural 
thank you good looking and much gratitude to anybody that like comment or subscribe to the channel and remember media scavenger hunters keep your binocular lenses focused and your zoom in tight